I have been trying to get over my regret of not finding a better option for a fuel tank. So if you if you remember, I said that I, I'm using a fuel tank for a, I think I said 65 charger. Well, the savvy among you will know that a 65 charger doesn't actually exist. And it was actually for a 65 satellite. Now, I did find somewhere where that was supposed to work and it's in there. So it works, but it took an extreme amount of modification, some of which I'm not willing to show on YouTube because it's it, just buy the right tank. That's what I should have done. That's what you should do. It's not worth it. Uh, actually, I'm going to plug a website here and no sponsorship. Didn't even buy a tank from them, but fueltanks.com. I ended up finding the correct tank and it was more expensive than what we paid. I paid 150 for the one that's in here. The one that I actually would have needed is like 350, but it would have been worth it because what I have is not, I mean, it's going to work. It's not going to leak. It's not going to fall out of the car but it just would have been a lot better to spend a little more money and get the right tank. So that's what I'm recommending to you is if you have a 66 Fury, fueltanks.com, they list the tank that you need. And from the pictures, it looks like the correct tank. I think it's probably worth it to go ahead and spend the money and get the right tank. That being said, we're gonna go ahead and get to work on the brakes because once we get this thing running, we're gonna wanna be able to get it to stop. So we're gonna start by trying to take this hose off. I mean, you can see these hoses are in terrible shape. Um, I don't know how this is gonna go, but we're gonna try. No way. I have been soaking this for a couple days. I don't believe it. Well, that wasn't interesting at all. I'm hoping that's an indication of how easy and how much this car wants to come apart. Um, are we taking bets? I've uh, pre-lubed the hub there so that maybe this will go easier. Okay, second thought, change of plans. We're not even gonna try this because as I'm looking here, if you look in here close, you can see the knurl. These lug nuts are actually pressed into the, the drum so the I'm, I said that wrong. The lug studs are actually pressed into the drum, so we're gonna have to go ahead and take the bearings off to get this hub, this drum off. So we'll do that now. So the this is I mean, it, it's coming apart as easy as you can hope. Bearing without cleaning it up and verifying looks like it's gonna be okay. Some tiny wheel bearings. That looks all right, we can clean that up and reuse it. Um, I also didn't get uh, hub seals because I wasn't expecting to have to take the drums off this way. Should have looked at it a little closer. I really didn't want to take the backing plates and everything off, but it's kind of looking like in order to change the, the wheel cylinders, I'm gonna to have to do that. Well, I guess we'll go ahead and take the backing plates off. And in order to do that, that's just these four big bolts here, and that's also going to hold your steering arm and everything, so hopefully all those bolts come out and go back together the way they're supposed to. All right, and then there's also cotter pins in those ones that go through that steering arm. That's an oversight. So that also contains the lower ball joint, so now it's got the pressure of the torsion bar on it, so we need to get a jack under there to kind of hold it up so it doesn't spring free. This will also be a good time to check out all of our ball joints and everything else while we got the weight off of this. Okay, so there's our backing plate. Now we can get to the bolts. These bolts were hidden right here behind the top part of that spindle, so that's why we couldn't do this the other way. Super easy, change the wheel cylinder. Just these two bolts. Hopefully they come out without breaking. I mean, if they break, they'll be stuck in the wheel cylinder, so it's not a huge deal, except then we have to go find bolts, but.
pull the bolts out. Bleeder screws broke off in this wheel cylinder anyway, so even if it was good, it's still not good. Wheel cylinder comes out, and then you have to save these pins for your new wheel cylinder because the new ones won't come with those. Let's just look and see if these would have worked. Absolutely, well, maybe they might have. It's possible, but I doubt it. They're probably junk. So, good decision to go ahead and buy them. You can rebuild these, but they're like $4 for a rebuild kit to do both sides, or $4 each for new ones. And then you don't have to mess with rebuilding them. So, new ones. Well, I've got this off, and I've got that all tore apart. I'm gonna do some measuring and see if my plan to disc brake convert this car is gonna work. We're gonna try to set that disc brake spindle up here. I believe it's gonna bolt right in here, and it's the same height are real, real close to the same height and shape as this knuckle. And then we have a disc brake spindle. We just have to get longer brake lines, different rotors, new pads, and that's not gonna happen today. So we still have to put the drums back together, but I had to get these bolts. Um, they're plenty long to fit, so that's a good sign. Pretend this is the passenger side and everything is backwards because I grabbed the wrong spindle. Those definitely line up. So if we line these up, I mean, I have to do some more precise measuring than this, but I believe that that's gonna work out perfectly. So we have a disc brake swap kit. We just need to get the rest of the pieces. Uh, we'll go ahead and like I said, we'll finish putting this back together the way it is. But I had to get the bolts, so I figured I'd try. We're gonna go ahead and take this side apart too because uh, the adjuster on that side is permanently welded in the position that it's in. And uh, if I have to order one, since you know they don't have any of this stuff in stock, I wanna order both of them if I need both of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this side apart and, and I'll probably go ahead and pull the drums off the back and see if I need to order all four of them. Uh, because yeah, just order them all at the same time because they won't be here till tomorrow so we're gonna get all these apart uh this is the same on the front as the other side i don't expect this one's gonna be any harder since the drum turns and the wet bearings taking it off so you don't have to try to get off the hub so we're gonna take this one off and then we'll move on and we'll film how how fun the drums are to get off on the back is it just me or uh is something not right here oh actually is it just me or are multiple things not right here. The short shoe is on the back. The adjuster is facing the right direction, but the arm is on the wrong side. There's no cable. Gonna have to fix all that. But good news is the adjuster works. So we're just gonna quit here and go onto the back and see if we can get the rear drums off because uh, we're just looking for other needed parts. All right, Let's see if we can get the rear drums off. Optimistic. That was easy. Hey, mud daubers. Imagine that. And spiders. I don't think there's any living spiders in here. Are you okay, Amber? Yeah, I'm good. Why are you doing that weird movement that you're doing over there? Okay. So, um, at least it looks like we have all of our parts and they're in the right places. Hey. Let me adjust your... Hey, look. That one works too. One more. I'm going to need you to leave that shirt in the garage tonight. <laughs> it's just a couple of spider webs. Don't be a sissy. All the spiders we found are dead. True. Sure. Well, that one came off easy. Did you bring your pliers? I did. Okay. Again, looks like we have all of our parts. Cable looks okay. Springs aren't broke. All right. Let's see if. Okay. That one moves too. So. 
good. Okay, we're gonna try something that I, I don't think I've ever tried before. I just wanna let you guys know, I did not punch him. <laughs> um, I, uh, I don't know if this is gonna work. We're gonna try to change the wheel cylinder without dismantling the brakes completely. Um, this may or may not go well. My plan is pull the top springs off, spread the top of the pad, pull the thing, the, the little uh, pistons, I don't know, the little rods out, and then take the wheel cylinder out, put the new one in. Yeah, that's my plan. First we have to uh, loosen the bolt on the back. I'm gonna guess, so far we're two for four, but for two days I've been soaking these things with PB Blaster. It's the wrong way. And <laughs> they fall, all of them, well, now three for four have come loose. So uh, I'm really excited about that because I, I, I just figured that I was gonna have lots of problems with that. So we'll uh, get these, this line off and get these bolts out. And then we'll bring you back for the exciting part when I try to wiggle that master cylinder out of there without taking the brake shoes off. Okay, here goes nothing. How stuck is in there? Because I could reach my fingers in there. Um, it's not, that's not the problem at this point. The problem is you really can't get... Ah, and they're locked up. These little rods, there's really not enough room to get... Oh, there we go. Mm -hmm. There is enough room. Now let's see you get it back in there. <laughs> Why do you want to put this one back? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's... Another one that's never, never would have worked. We're, uh, we're gonna have to break on the front until tomorrow because I decided to go ahead and order new, new shoes because, I don't know. They're just not the greatest. I know there's not a lot of, not a lot of shoe or pad on them when they're new anyway, but they're the one, the passenger side one, was wore pretty uneven and a lot thinner on one side than the other. And I probably could have got away with reusing them, but I just felt like since we're, our intent for this is to be a daily driver, the $30 for new shoes was worth the price, especially when I have to go to the parts store tomorrow anyway, because I don't have the, uh, I don't have the, uh, What's the word I'm looking for, Amber? Oh, the adjuster for the driver's side. So, I can't put it back together till tomorrow anyway, so. I gotta go to the back side. Ow, that car there. So, it's a lot easier to do this if you take the brake shoes off. It might even be faster. By the time I get done, I'm gonna end up having the shoes so far off, I'm gonna take them back off to put them back on anyway. Okay, I give up. Six minutes. We are not, it, it's just take the shoes off. I'm doing that. <laughs> I just wanna say, my problem was not that I didn't take the shoes off, my problem was that this wheel cylinder doesn't fit great. The, the top edges there were getting caught. So even with the shoes off, I couldn't get it in there. Perfect. I'm gonna try again on the other side. Just to prove that you can do it without taking the shoes off. Amber has no confidence. She doesn't think I'm gonna be able to do this. 
I was wondering what time we're gonna get to go to bed tonight. <laughs> You're determined to do it. I don't think that's supposed to be stuck on there. Okay. It's a lot of dirt. Okay. <clears throat> this one is slightly different than the other one. Uh, I think it's machined enough to fit in there. So we're going to see if we can do this. Well, I know we can do it because we just about did it the last time with the one that had the problem, so. Question is, can you do it with less than 17% battery? The only bad part is now I got to figure out how to <clears throat> get that adjuster out so I can grease it up and get it working properly on its own because it didn't take the rest of the brakes apart this time. <clears throat> I think I can get the adjuster out pretty easy. It's changed. I just got to hook the brake line up now. Well, I think that's it for tonight. In the morning, he is going to start building exhaust out of this pile of pipes. Should be interesting. Okay, through the magic of YouTube, it is not the next day. It's two days later, but we've got our exhaust done. And it's not perfect. Um, well, you saw the pile of parts I built it out of. So these slip joints, they're backwards. They're going the wrong way, I know that. But the shape of the tube meant the slip joint had to go that way. And while this is the most free flowing exhaust you could ever get, it's obviously not. This isn't gonna. This isn't gonna hurt the performance of our little 318 enough to make it worth what I, I would have had to cut this out, flip it around, and weld it back in. It's just not worth it for what we were trying to do here. We're just trying to get exhaust on here so we could actually hear the engine and and hear what it's doing. Because all we could hear before was it had a dead miss, and you couldn't hear if it had valve train noise. You probably couldn't have heard it if it was knocking. And so this is gonna suffice for that. It's gonna be perfect for driving it for a little while. Um, and. I mean, I got six or six hours or so in it, but it didn't cost me a dime. Well, it cost me a little bit of electricity and some welding wire. That, those costs are negligible. So, but it's all done. Now we're going to finally get to do some of the other stuff because we got our parts in. Uh, Amber's currently cleaning up our drums so we can put them on. Uh, I was gonna order new drums, but holy crap are they expensive. It's like $120 a drum. Well, uh, for that kind of money, I could have converted it to disc brakes, but I'm not ready to do that yet. So we're gonna pad slap it or shoe slap it anyway. Uh, we had to order some little $10 kits because uh, obviously one of our adjusters didn't turn. This one works, 
but I figured out why the shoes were on backwards on the other side. They had two of the adjuster levers for the driver's side. So rather than get the right parts, they just put the other sides on backwards and the adjusters weren't even gonna work because, well, it was installed wrong and missing pieces. So we got two brand new kits. We'll go ahead and use the new adjusters. I'll throw the good parts out of this over in our drum brake drawer in our cabinet over there. We got one and these are left and right because the adjuster has opposite threads. One side goes one way, the other side goes the other way. We got our new shoes and they are, I don't know, brakes. Brakes Best Select it was all they had in stock or had available. Uh, we do have the 11 by two and three quarter inch front shoes. The big one that we were waiting on is our radiator. Uh, and <laughs> the ad, this is from eBay, the ad said 30% uh, improved cooling. I'm not buying it. And here's why. We currently have a two core copper brass radiator. This is a three core aluminum radiator. And if you saw my video on the, the white truck after I fell for the advertising, I realized that aluminum is not, it's like 40% less cooling capacity. There's, there's science out there. If you look it up, I think it's 435 kilowatt something on copper and 201 or I might have that something transposed. It doesn't matter. Aluminum doesn't dissipate heat as good as copper but it's much stronger at a lighter weight than copper. That's why all of your race cars, including our, our race truck, have aluminum radiators because you can get a one inch wide tube and it's at a significant weight savings over what it would take to get a copper radiator with that size of tube. It's, aluminum's better in some, some cases. In our case, it's better because it was cheaper. This is the cheapest replacement radiator that would bolt into this car that I could find. Well, it's supposed to bolt into this car that I could find. And the motor that's in it is never gonna be a problem with overheating as long as we get the engine tuned properly. So that's what we're going with. Uh, we also got a water pump because the car originally had a poly 318 or an A318 and I'm guessing that the water outlet was on the other side because that's where it's at on the radiator. We need our outlet from the radiator inlet to the water pump on the passenger side and currently it's on the driver's side, but with where the water pump sits, you can't see the timing marks or anything to be able to time the engine. It's just a mismatch of parts. Somebody looks like put the A water pump on the LA engine, and so it's just not gonna work out. I mean, it, it would work, but we couldn't time the engine and get it running right, and I have a feeling maybe that's part of the problem with why it runs so bad now. So we're gonna swap the water pump to what's supposed to be on this engine, move the radiator, outlet to the passenger side or passenger side and the inlet to the driver's side which it's already on the driver's side that one goes in and out on the same side i think but then we're going to change the oil because we know it runs it's worth changing the oil now um i'm going to put lucas in it because i always do and then we got new coolant and then we're going to start trying to get it to run properly Okay, we got our brakes all put back together. Everything went together well, like it's supposed to. Uh, got our drums all cleaned up, and I know we probably should have had them turned, but last time I tried to have a drum turned, I couldn't find anybody that even knew how to operate the machine to turn a drum. All they know how to do is rotors, so it's gonna be good. Uh, this one is also, I'm sure you noticed, it's broken here, so it's probably gonna induce a vibration, but again, we know that if it if it vibrates too bad and we can't it's undrivable then that just moves the disc brake swap up on our list i don't want to spend any more than i absolutely have to to get this working because it's not staying on the car long term i'm doing it as cheaply as possible but replacing the parts that i need to replace so that they should operate properly you could argue that the drum won't operate properly with the chunk missing out of it but it it'll stop the car fine the part where the pad goes is not compromised it's just that dust lip and 
it is what it is. So now we've got our bearings all greased up. Before I do that, I'm gonna grab my tub of grease and I'll pack the inside of the hub with grease so it has some extra grease in there. Don't know if it's required, don't know if it's advisable, but that's the way I was taught, so that's why I'm gonna do it. And then we'll go ahead and get our drums put back on. All I heard is, why isn't it recording? So I'm thinking that maybe she missed that. I just used a paint stick to press it in there. So I've got our bearings all packed and covered in grease. Put the inner bearing in. And we gotta go find a socket that will work. Uh-oh. the wrong ones. Well. It's shaped differently than the other side. Uh, I checked one box and they both have the same part number. So it looks like it'll fit. Fit on the, the seal surface there, fits inside the drum. I'm gonna go find a socket. So this is what the seal is expecting, as expecting it to look like. Um, hopefully it's interchangeable. And I'm driving it in there flush because this one, when I took these out, this part here was sticking out and I'm thinking that if this is flush, difference in seal style is not gonna make a difference. Could be wrong, we'll find out. I don't feel anything rubbing or anything, so I think we're gonna be okay. Outer wheel bearing, the washer, And then we're not going for super tight here. We just want snug. We don't want to, these are used bearings in their original location. So they've already done their wear in. So we don't want to put extra torque on that and cause extra pressure. Cause then extra pressure creates heat. And I don't know whether it's more proper to put these tangs over the end or wrap around the side, but I like wrapping around the side, so that's why I'm gonna do it. It's not gonna matter. Once it's in there, it's not, not gonna come out. I didn't have to cut it off. Just wrapped it all, I got a full wrap all the way around there. You just wanna make sure that you don't have a piece of this cotter pin hanging up where it can cut uh, to contact your dust cap because obviously as you're driving, it can wear and potentially cut off your dust cap. Everything's nice and tight, cotter pins installed. I'm gonna go do the same thing to the other side and Amber's gonna finish wire wheel on the outside of that drum so we can paint everything. Amber sure did a good job on these drums, didn't she? Just a little black paint so that they're not Rusty, you're not even gonna be able to see them because we're running stock steelies on this. Actually, on the front, I don't even want to admit this, but we're running Ford steelies because that's what came on the car. And I only had two Chryslers left. The other two are on the front of the red truck. They're coming off pretty soon. So as soon as I get those off there, they'll go on here and I don't know what we'll do with the Ford, type, Ford wheels, but something. Save them just in case. Yeah, probably. Anyway, I went ahead and greased everything that had a greaser for some reason. This lower ball joint doesn't even have a provision for a greaser and neither does the, the pitman arm that I could see. I couldn't find one. It is what it is. Everything feels tight. So we're gonna go ahead and throw the tires on here uh, and then we'll adjust the brakes once we get the tires on there. And it's not as a, important when you've got a drum that is pressed on the hub like this one is where the wheel studs actually hook it all together. But I'm still gonna put the, the tire on there. I just wanted to show you guys my old rusty lug nuts. So. Uh, I just sandblast them and I've got this stuff called Caswell Black Oxide. Soak them in a solution of that in water. I usually do overnight. And then there's another one that's a penetrating oil that you soak them in and it's supposed to keep them from rusting. I thought it was pretty cool. And I've done, I got a little pint of that stuff and I've done all the bolts or most of the bolts on the Jeep and I haven't even gone through the first mixture of it. So nice to not have to put rusty lug nuts on.
We got all of our wheels and tires on, got our brakes all adjusted. I just adjusted them up till they had just a slight drag. Uh, you've seen the condition of the drums. They're gonna clean up after the first couple brake applications. Everything should seat right in and be just fine. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and drain the oil out of it and change the filter, but since I don't have one of those tall drain pans, I gotta let this all the way down and do it on a creeper. So I'm not gonna try to suffer with the camera underneath the car. I'll do that and I'll meet you on the top side once we're ready to fill it back up with oil. So I just noticed something kind of funny and I figured I'd let you guys know my evil plan, it's working. Amber is so tired of helping me look for tools. She goes around behind me picking all of them up, putting them away in the toolbox. <laughs> I, I, that was my plan all along. <laughs> we do spend half our time looking for tools. <laughs> Went ahead and drained the coolant, but a little bit was left in there. Uh, got the oil pulled out of it, nothing exciting. Um, the worst thing I found under there was a frame oil filter. So <laughs> we'll uh, go ahead and fill it back up with oil so I don't forget. And then uh, we'll tackle getting this radiator out so we can get that water pump changed. Why do you put Lucas in every time? I just really like what it does in the engine. It. Uh, do you only do it on older cars? Uh, I haven't been doing it on any of our newer vehicles just because of how much it changes the viscosity. But uh, somebody turned me on to the synthetic version that isn't as thick, so we might try it. But I just like how it, it, it just makes the oil sticky. It doesn't make it nasty and like corroded or <laughs> like uh, like gummy, it just makes it like it coats everything, like a thin coating of oil, and I just think that's gotta be good. And I do it this way because Lucas takes forever to pour, and it's cheaper to buy it in the gallon. Where do you buy it in the gallon? I think I've only seen like the squeeze bottles. Walmart is where we buy it in the gallon. And then you just add enough to replace a quart during your oil change. If you have an old car like this one, it only takes five quarts to change it. Which, this is a newer motor, it may take six, but we'll see. Uh, one gallon and a quart makes an oil change. And you can shake it up too, because I, I've never had a problem with this personally, but I know a guy who was doing an oil change on a semi and on a cold day, poured a gallon of Lucas in first and then topped it off with oil. And the truck took a long time to build oil pressure. The best we could figure is the oil pump was having a hard time sucking up that thick, thick Lucas that was cold. So I always mix it with the oil before I pour it in there since then. It's easy enough to do. So are we taking bets on whether or not the new radiator bolts right in? Which side are you on? That it's not going to. <laughs> then no, we're not taking the fence. <laughs> okay. I don't understand. What? Well, they cut the transmission lines and then just put a piece of hose over they're like the metal's touching on the inside of the hose. I don't understand why they didn't just take them off the radiator. <laughs> Guess we're not turning the pressure up on this transmission. I might actually, probably gonna go ahead and flare the end of those just to help keep those transmission lines on there real quick. It's, I have the tools, it's not that big a deal. But yeah, as you can see, this radiator has been repaired. One, two, Oh, only two, two times the tanks or the, the brackets fallen off. It's got a hole in it. The, I think it's actually corrosion that ate these tubes directly in half. So I, I don't know. Like if you look right here, you can see like the the, the tube is gone. Like it's yeah. so. This one was not worth messing with. I didn't know you could repair a radiator. On these old copper brass ones, you can solder them. Oh. Um, on the aluminum ones, they make this, uh, it's almost like a glue stick that you can melt and put on there. 
We're gonna have a problem with the power steering. Challenge. <laughs> no, no it's, it's gonna be a problem. Uh, the bracket is obviously off of the poly because it has an extra bolt over here and our new water pump's not gonna have that bolt. I have a box of stuff over there, but I don't think I have any small block power steering brackets in there. I have a brand new rebuilt power steering pump, but it's in Colorado. Anyway, we'll get we'll figure we'll figure that out when we get there. Uh, for now, we're just gonna get the fan off, take the alternator off, disconnect the battery first, and move the power steering pump out of our way. And then we can get to that water pump and get it changed. That was pretty nasty. My dauber's in there. Yeah. How does that happen? I don't know. How does a mud dauber build a nest inside of a water pump? It had to have been what open was, at some point. What was off of it? What is this hose? What is this whole connected? It was connected to the radiator. I would say it was disconnected for a while. What's th those ones? They were connected to the intake, the bypass, and One to of the, the heat hoses hose. had to be, unless at they some, just at put some it point, on with that down there, but I doubt it. Maybe. Well, this this definitely came off the original engine, because like I said, this is for. So it's possibly they put it, possible they put it on there with the mud dubber nest in there. <laughs> Don't say that. That makes me scared. <laughs> you should be scared. It's fine. We have another plan for this if this engine doesn't work out. It's just gonna cost money and take time. <laughs> Fascinating. Yeah. That's not the word I was gonna use. <laughs> it does make you question the rest of the engine though, if that part was that nasty. But like the oil I'm, looked fine. I'm going, I'm going, my, my theory is that was on the poly that was in it, not the 318 that they put in it later. That's, uh, that's my belief and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> What's the question? Why is the whole alphabet on this plate? Because all the way from A to Z. Because back in 1965 or 66 when they were designing this car, they wanted you to ask that question today. <laughs> well, now I want to know. <laughs> As it always does, things are snowballing. We uh, we have a modified pulley for uh, alignment. I'm assuming. And uh, I put it on here. It uh, doesn't line up very good. If I took the washers out, it probably would. But then I had this pulley that was on my shelf over there. And it lines up great. The problem is it lines up on the front two grooves and our alternator's lined up with the back two grooves. And the reason that is is because the alternator is supposed to go on, on the, end, the car this came out of. The alternator is supposed to go around the power st or the air conditioning compressor and then sneak right down behind there and that's how that makes its loop. And then this one would run the power steering. Now obviously we don't have an AC compressor, but I'm going to be honest, I wouldn't mind putting one on here. This is an AC car. So the plan is, it's Saturday. Uh, about four o'clock in the afternoon so there's no chance we're gonna make it to any junkyards today we're gonna to go Monday morning uh, and see I, I know of a couple of junkyards that we might be able to call and hit up they might have an old I mean this is the exact same setup that the v6 in the red Dodge pickup had when we bought it so if we can find something like that in a junkyard, we can go get a power steering pulley or pump and pulley and brackets and everything. I so said we already got one of the brackets on here. We can get all of the, the air conditioning stuff so we can set that on here. We're not gonna make hoses today, but then that will be an idler for an alternator. I just, so my goal here is to spend as little as possible, but to do it in a way that when we're done, we have something like if we can get this running properly and get everything working the way it's supposed to work we can drive it this way for a while i mean then we don't have to be in a hurry and throw together the hemi to do the engine swap we can enjoy the car with the 318 that's in it i mean is it going to win any races probably not but against my jeep 
Well, that might be close. <laughs> if the if we can get it, if, if it has power steering and air conditioning, and it's gonna need some shocks because uh, they're not terrible, only one bounce, but this would be a nice car to drive. So we're gonna do that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and dump some brake fluid in the master cylinder and hope that it's still in the master cylinder and not all over the floor when we get back out here Monday. And uh, for us, it's gonna be a couple of days. For you, in about one second. Hold on, longer than that. Because while he was playing with that, I decoded our little fender panel here. So the lowercase f6 means that it has a rear seat speaker, which surprising. Uh, the AB41 means it has a, had a 318 two barrel. The C5 stands for an automatic transmission. G1 is a 26 inch radi radiator, which he was happy about because that's what we ordered. Uh, the R1 is AM radio. S1 is AC with heater. And then the SO number is the delivery number. So essentially like the car's birth date, which was May 19th. And then the body obviously is a Plymouth Fury. The trim H5R means it was red interior. And then the paint PP1 means red and the W means it had a white stripe on the roof. So maybe we'll put it back. <laughs> no, I have other plans for the roof, but the, the red. Oh, yeah. So when we get ready to do the engine swap on this, I want to completely clean up the engine bay and paint it back to the original color. Mm -hmm. So that'll be good to have that paint coat so we can go get some paint mixed up. True. Anyway, we'll see you guys in just a second. We just got back from the junkyard and the worst case scenario at the junkyard is when they have a part of the junkyard that they call Crusher Hill. And they say, well, the car you're looking for is at the top of Crusher Hill. Um, yeah, that's, that's where our 13 that we got all of our parts for the Fury was at. We ended up getting a fan with a clutch, uh, the water pump pulley, we got the crank pulley, which I don't think we're gonna need. I think the one we have on here is the right one anyway. We got the power steering pump with all the brackets. We got the AC compressor with all of its brackets. And then it also has the upper mount for the alternator and the lower mount that we stole out of my parts bucket over there will work the, sa the same. It's supposed to have one with a bunch of other stuff on it, but it wasn't there and it's not gonna matter. So we're gonna get all this stuff cleaned up and painted and put on here. 16 hours later, we finally got all of our parts all cleaned up, got all of our bolts black oxide coated and all of our parts painted. And now we're ready to go ahead and start taking the rest of the stuff off the engine that we don't need and start putting the stuff that we do need on there. Warning, jump cut. We got our cooling system all reassembled. Um, everything went pretty easy. It all kind of bolted on like it was meant to be on there because it kind of was. Nothing real interesting, just put everything back the way it was when I took it off that other engine. Uh, single belt for now. Uh, I, when we went, we had to go get a lower radiator hose because the engine we pulled all this stuff from, it was cut. And the one, the old system on this had an inch and a half lower radiator hose. Well, all this stuff has an inch and three quarter lower radiator hose. And I might've been able to stretch it over it. I just decided, for the $8 it costs to replace it, just put a new one on. So it's got a new lower radiator hose. Um, I looped the heater hose because this heater hoses were too short anyway. And uh, we're not gonna need a heater for a little while anyway. Um, and possibly not before we swap this out with the Hemi. We might have to fix that if it gets winter time and it starts getting cool and we haven't done that, but that's not that big a deal to fix that. Um, the the next thing that I'm gonna do, because we're ready to, to fire this up and kind of let it warm up and see if we can get it to run a little better, which will will hopefully be just getting it running again and getting a couple heat cycles in it and we can maybe get rid of some of that mist. I don't know yet. I don't even know what's wrong with it. I haven't looked at it. But as I was looking at this, I thought, well, the coil laying on the manifold is probably not the greatest situation. Well, then I started looking at how it's hooked up and 
I'm gonna fix that real quick. And all I'm gonna do is make all the connections, but instead of having everything just twisted and bare, <laughs> because uh, this is the power wire to the coil, this is the hot side of the coil. And so if this grounds out, it's gonna drop the voltage to the coil. And I don't know that that's what was causing our miss, but it's not helping it. So we're gonna go ahead and fix all this. I'm just gonna crimp new ends on all this. I'm gonna shorten. This wire doesn't need to be 10 feet long. Um, all that is is more connections that are not done correctly. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll go back to the original wiring harness here. And I, I mean, that might reach, but we won't. We'll, we'll extend it just a little bit. Uh, unfortunately, this connector is not gonna survive. So I'll just have to, I'll have to find another nut for the coil and just put it on there. But this one, I mean, it's got like two pieces of the wire left. And I've had situations where that will cause a miss. So we're gonna get all this cleaned up and then we're gonna start this thing and see how it sounds and see if we can get a heat cycle in it. I just thought of something else. Before we start it, we're gonna have to fix the radiator. Uh, it required a little bit of modification on this side. Uh, you probably won't be able to see it, but I had to clearance it for the battery box down there because the bracket was too wide. And on this side, the bolt holes don't line up. So I'm gonna have to drill a new hole in the radiator support and put a bolt, nut and bolt on it. And that's, you know, I, that was expected buying a $150 aftermarket radiator that's kind of a one size. It basically said, if you have a 26 inch Mopar radiator, this'll fit. And fit is a very loose term for, I mean, it fits. It'll go in there. It doesn't mount, but it fits. Okay, so we got our new hot wire. I gotta shrink wrap this stuff still. We got our new ground wire for our coil. I'm gonna mount the coil. I got a bracket that I found in my stuff over there. Mount the coil somewhere right around here. I'm not sure what this little device here is, but I'm gonna kind of move it out of the way and bolt it back down. There's, the coil mount here is supposed to be one of the stepped ones and I don't have one of those. So I'm just gonna put a single bolt in it. That'll hold it better than it was being held before. Anyway, uh, it'll end up being, actually it'll end up being right over here. I might have to turn that, I don't know. I, I, haven't, I haven't figured that part out yet. Somewhere in here is where the coil is gonna go. But while I was doing that, I noticed that the coil wire wasn't being fully engaged in the, the coil. So I went to move the boot and tore the wire off. I've cut it now. So then I pulled the coil off to try to fix this and I realized that the little tangs in here were bent in something like that. So it wasn't making a good connection. So I'm going to fix this, fix the coil wire. And then while I'm waiting for the paint to dry on my coil bracket that I just cleaned up and painted, I'm going to go ahead and check all of the wires on the cap side anyway, and make sure that they all have a good connection because I mean, I'm here, I might as well. But that's what that connection should look like. It should have plenty to go ahead and it fits into a socket inside the cap and the coil. And so we're gonna fix this wire and then we're gonna check the rest of them, make sure they're good. We've got our coil mounted and the wire is hooked up correctly. We've got all of our radiator hoses on. We've got our heater hoses looped. We've got our power steering hose looped because um, going to the newer style Power steering pump means that the power steering pump takes an O-ring fitting and the power steering box does not. So there's not a, uh, I, I, I haven't looked. I, I, the, the fittings I had would not work. The power steering pump that was on the car had a, a flare type fitting and the, uh, or maybe, I don't remember what it was. Anyway, I didn't even try because I knew it was gonna work. That being said, I need new power steering hoses anyway because the one that was on there was two crimped hydraulic hoses hooked together with a union and the rubber was all cracked and falling off and wasn't gonna work. So, got that done. I plugged a whole bunch of vacuum leaks. I hooked the choke pull off back up because it wasn't hooked up. I set the gap on the points. Unfortunately, I thought my timing light had a dwell function built into it, but it does not. So we're just gonna have to go with the, the setting that Amber found on the internet, said that uh, this Fury called for a 
17 thousandths points gap. Um, I'm not, I don't know. I'm hoping, I guess, that that distributor is out of the original engine. I'm pretty sure they'll swap between an LA and an A motor. Otherwise, I don't have any idea where that distributor came from. I'm hoping that at that points gap, it'll fire up and hopefully run properly. Got the coil hooked up properly. Uh, we have the ability to set the timing now once we get it fired up. But first we have to get it fired up. Uh, I think that's all I really had to go over. I'm pouring coolant in it and so far it's not running on the ground so that's a bonus. Um, let me get the coolant in it. Uh, the fuel system is not primed yet. Uh, put the fuel tanks in it now so we do have to get the fuel up to the front. So once we get done putting coolant in it, we'll start working on that and uh, probably just go ahead and set the camera up and you guys can watch the frustration of trying to get this thing started again. Okay, go ahead and fire it. Okay, go ahead and fire it again. Lock up. Was the belt just that loose before that we couldn't hear it squealing? Hope you guys saw that, but the alternator is not turning. That's what that squealing is. Maybe I just had it too tight. Okay, try again. dumping some in the carburetor. Still haven't got any fuel from the back. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Are you pressing the throttle? No. Hmm. We're, we're going to mess with the uh, fuel system and see if we can figure out why it doesn't seem to want to suck fuel from the back. Uh, we'll be right back with you guys. Okay, we had fuel as far forward as the, the subframe over there and the hose clamp was a little bit loose, so maybe it was sucking air, I don't know, hopefully. We're gonna try this again. Okay, go ahead and pump, or try it. Try it again. Try it again. So as I'm uh, checking this here, I realized that the fuel filter, I'm pretty sure, is on backwards. 
But because of the fact that it's been installed backwards and it is backwards, I'm, it ran before and it pumped fuel before, so I'm just gonna put it back on the way it was because if it's full of trash, I don't wanna put it on the right way and blow all that trash into the engine. So we're gonna have to fix that at some point. But for right now, I'm gonna put it back the way it was and I'm gonna go ahead, we've got fuel over here. I'm gonna take the fit, fitting off here and I've got the coil wire disconnected obviously and see if we can get uh, fuel coming out of the carburetor and then we can decide if the problem is the, I mean, at that point we should have fuel at the carburetor so it should work. This is all the fun problems you get to sort out when you finish in somebody else's project that they couldn't get running. Okay, go ahead and crank it. Still doesn't look like it's getting very good fuel flow. Okay, that actually appears to be the needle and seat. So we're gonna go ahead and blow this out since we can pull it out that easy. I don't know anything about these carburetors. I've never worked on one of these before. Um, I've heard through a comment on one of the videos that they're not fun to work on. So that's exciting. And it looks, I'm not going to change this because that'd be like throwing good money at bad because this is this engine is definitely not staying in here no matter what happens. So if I had a four barrel intake laying around, I might try it, but I don't have one and I'm not going to buy one. Okay, try it one more time, Amber. good it runs a lot better than it did it has a cooling system now it it got a heat cycle it's hot I mean it's not it's probably 100 and 
30, 140 degrees, but the timing is way off. The carburetor is not working right. So that being said, we're not going to be able to drive it in this video. We really, really, really were trying to, and we pushed off like two extra days recording this video, trying to get it driving. But it's just, there's too many challenges to overcome for this one video. I'm sure this video is getting pretty long and our master cylinder is, it's dead to the world. Also, our carburetor is, there's, there's missing parts, like the choke pull off isn't working completely and that might not be a problem with choke pull off, it might be a problem with something else because there's also a missing rod here that's supposed to go down and actuate something down here. I'm sure that's like a fast idle cam. In fact, I'm sure of it. And so that's missing. Also, the carburetor doesn't come all the way back to idle like it's supposed to. It might still have a vacuum leak somewhere. I, I mean, I, I haven't really messed with it that much. So either way, the carburetor needs to come off. It needs to get rebuilt. When we were at the junkyard getting the rest of the parts, there was an exact duplicate of this carburetor on that engine. I didn't take it because this one seemed to be working. I hadn't really looked at it close enough yet and I know exactly where it's at. So I think we're gonna go pick up that carburetor, take this one apart, mesh the two together with a kit, make a good carburetor, and then we can go, once we get that working right, then we can go on to fixing other problems, like getting the timing set and all the other stuff that we need to do. But unfortunately, when you buy a project car like this that is kind of a basket case or an unfinished project, something that somebody else started on and never actually got it running, you have to go back and undo everything that they did wrong and wrong is an opinion thing, but in my opinion, it should run the way it's supposed to. So we need to get it done, get it dialed back to where it's supposed to be and get it running properly. And then we can move on to getting the brakes working, getting the transmission working and actually driving the car. So we're going to end the video here. I hope you guys have enjoyed our struggles with our 66 Plymouth Fury daily driver project. And again, I want to reiterate, this is going to be a daily driver and not just like a going to town and getting groceries driver, like a going to Colorado for vacation driver. Like this is what we're going to drive all the time when we go on long road trips and stuff. So if you guys are as excited about seeing that happen as we are, subscribe and I promise there'll be more videos. See you soon.